Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new lecture of our course on processing in memory systems. Uh, we start wrapping up this course, and today we are going to talk about an important topic, how to enable the adoption of processing in memory. What are still barriers for the adoption of processing in memory, and what can we do to overcome these barriers? And this encompasses applications and software for processing in memory. It's still unknown what are really good applications or not completely well known what are good applications for different types of processing in memory systems. Uh, another barrier to solve is uh, ease of programming. We need to find ways of uh, incorporate processing in memory systems into our computing systems in a seamless way. And one important thing to do is to facilitate programming these uh, PIN systems and uh, the uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, programming of uh, compute systems with processing and memory capabilities. We also have to deal with uh, system support and security support, and we are going to mention some recent works today uh, to uh, solve issues like coherence, synchronization, virtual memory, etc. And we also need uh, proper runtime and compilation systems that can make uh, scheduling decisions, data mapping, or uh, control a system with processing and memory capabilities, a memory-centric computing system in an efficient way. And finally, we will also mention that infrastructures and benchmarks are needed to um, assess the benefits uh, and the feasibility of workloads to processing in memory systems. And this also includes the access to uh, real-world processing in memory systems that we have covered uh, in this course. But solving all these issues and all these barriers uh, requires a change of mindset. And this change of mindsets needs to encompass the entire computer stack from the electrons and the devices to the algorithm and the problem. We talk about uh, these issues and also a very long summary of uh, recent trends in processing in memory in this uh, book chapter, A Modern Primer on Processing in Memory. In particular, uh, chapter eight of the, or section eight of the book chapter uh, talks about enabling the adoption of processing in memory. So most of the contents of this lecture and the longer version of this lecture you can find in this section eight. We are going to start talking about uh, some of these challenges, but the very first thing to remind you is uh, what has been um, an important part of this course and is the analysis, the discussion about real team uh, hardware systems and prototypes. And this is important as well to enable the adoption of processing in memory, because if we understand these systems well, we will be able to uh, make good use of them and also think about how future PIN systems should be. Uh, here in this uh, slide, you can find a link to the playlist of this course, and these are specifically the lectures where we talk about real world processing in memory systems. We started with the admin PIM architecture. Remember that this one is based on DDR4 modules, and on each module, there are PIN chips. Inside the PIN chips, there are memory arrays, and there are small processors called DRAM processing units or DPUs. If you want to remind about this uh, admin PIM architecture, I can recommend you these lectures uh, uh, two and three, three and four of this course about uh, the architecture of the admin uh, PIM system. We also talk about proposals from Samsung, for example, film DRAM or HPM PIM. Remember that this one is based on HPM memory and some of the HPM2 layers have been modified to integrate um, a small SIMD units that are called PCUs. These CMD units have uh, 16 lanes and they operate on 16 bit floating point values. Uh, here you can find a link to the long lecture on HPMP or FIM DRAM. And also uh, from another DRAM vendor, a major DRAM vendor, SK Hynix, we learn about this AIM architecture. This uh, here you can, uh, this one is based on GDDR6. But similar to HPM PIM, it uh, places small processors, uh, small processing units near each memory bank. It also uh, shares with the Samsung Finduram or HPM PIM architecture the fact that they target the same type of workloads, mainly um, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Here you can see another view of the uh, GDDR6 based AIM architecture, where you can see the processing units. They are again based on an array of multipliers and also an other tree and also an accumulator. 
accumulator and a special unit for activation functions. You can learn all the details about this architecture in the corresponding lecture. Also from Samsung, a DIM based solution. In this case, they extend the, um, uh, the buffer of the DIM with an FPEA that can be programmed. For example, uh, in this course, we talk about one possible design that um, can be used for recommendation systems. In the FPEA, uh, two uh, near memory processing units are uh, implemented, and each of these has the, the, the necessary. Uh, units to um, um, it, to execute the um, uh, as far as features uh, commands uh, of the recommendation systems. And here you can see a picture of the execution flow. How first the uh, embedding tables are loaded into the memory, and at some point the host changes the rank by uh, change the, changing the value of one configuration register. At that point, the accelerators, the near memory processing accelerators, start working, start executing this uh, this um, SLS operator reading um, from the embedding embedding tables in the memory and computing uh, um, um, the corresponding gather and reduce operation and accumulating results in this uh, piece and buffer design SRAM based buffer that you can uh, see on the slide. A longer lecture of AXDIM, uh, you can find the link at the bottom of the slide. And from Alibaba, also for recommendation systems, we studied the uh, three stack logic die and DRAM die vertically bonded with hybrid bonding. Uh, in this case, the architecture, uh, well, the, in the logic layer, there are basically two type of, types of accelerators. One is called the match engine, and the other one is um, called the neural engine um, that are focused on accelerating specific um, steps of the uh, recommender system, mainly the coarse grain matching in the match engine and the fine grain ranking in the neural engine. You can uh, learn more about this lecture in the um, well uh, in the in the, the uh, recording that you will find in this link these are real prototypes uh, processing near memory systems real uh, real uh, architectures that you can even uh, purchase as, as, as is the case of the admin PIM architecture uh, but there are also but they are all processing near memory solutions um, in this course we, we have also talked about processing using memory solutions those are the um, are, um, uh, technology Technologies where we make use of the analog properties of the uh, DRAM arrays and the DRAM cells in order to compute. And this um, interesting work, Compute DRAM, showed that it's possible to do such computations in off the shelf. DRAM chips, and uh, they managed to do so by making use of an FPGA-based memory controller. And essentially, what they found is that by using a carefully engineered sequence of um, um, activate and pre-charge commands, they can open several rows at the same time, and this way either perform memory copy, uh, memory copies from copy uh, entire rows copies from copied from one place to another place in the same DRAM subarray, or in some uh, DRAM chips, they can even perform uh, bitwise operations. Uh, in our group, we took advantage of the uh, findings by uh, Compute DRAM in order to. Uh, develop and pro, uh, make public and open source a flexible plat platform to explore end-to-end -end implementations of processing using memory techniques. It has a hardware side and it also has a software side. These Pi DRAM uh, framework, where uh, that you can find the uh, entire workflow in this slide, allows us to test some of these uh, processing using memory techniques using real uh, DRAM chips. It's uh, based on an FPEA that uh, embeds a rocket chip, a, a RISC-V CPU core, and this one accesses the memory through uh, the PyDRAM memory controller that is in charge of issuing the necessary commands, the necessary sequences of commands to perform, for example, raw copy operations or random number generation. And uh, here you can see a picture of the FPA prototype that was used uh, in this work to um, integrate this um, uh, specialized controller and the RISC-V CPU core. But you can learn much more about PyDRAM in the corresponding lecture. You can find the link at the bottom of the slide. And uh, here you can also see a link to the paper and the repository because, as I mentioned, the code is publicly available.
It's also uh, important, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, find efficient ways of programming the processing or memory-centric systems or systems with processing in memory capabilities. And this is why um, it's uh, programming models and code generation are also important for PIM. In this course, have, we have uh, covered a little bit of how to program processing in memory systems with what have been particularly talk about the uh, how to program the admin PIM architecture. And here I'll um, uh, leave you a couple of uh, slides with links to lectures on programming the admin PIM architecture. This is from this course, and this is from the computer architecture master's course. But we need good ways of programming any other processing in memory architecture. This is like a slide corresponds to the CD-ROM framework, which is also an end-to-end -end framework to uh, implement new operations that can be executed in processing using memory devices in DRAM chips with processing um, using DRAM capabilities. And, uh, and we also propose a way of programming this um, type of, uh, of uh, uh, processing using memory systems uh, in the Cindiron framework that um, has the, its own uh, uh, ISA extensions that would need to be used to program and perform, uh, for example, arithmetic operations or logic operations using uh, DRAM chips. And here you can see an example of how to uh, translate or how to compile um, uh, high level code, C code into uh, some um, uh, code that uses the um, a specific uh, CIMDRAM ISA. You can learn much more about CIMDRAM in the corresponding lecture. This is a long version of the, the, the lecture. Uh, and the additional challenge is we should find uh, when is the right time to schedule some computation on the memory side, on the uh, PIM processing units, uh, but also how to map data so that uh, the access to data is the most efficient as possible from both the a host processor, for example, a CPU or a GPU, and the uh, processing in memory elements. Um, the uh, one uh, example that we covered in the beginning of this course is PIM enabled instructions. This is a way of, uh, of loading computation to the um, uh, memory side in a fine grain manner. Um, as an example, in the page rank, uh, page rank algorithm, we need to um, access entire cache lanes from the main memory in order to, um, to read the ranks of uh, a specific um, nodes in a graph and we need to do all computation in the host processor. And this moves a lot of, a lot of data specifically for maybe a single um, addition as uh, we can see here in this slide, we need to bring one entire cache line 64 bytes um, uh, out of the memory and then write it back. So 64 bytes in uh, to the memory. But with the PIM enable instructions, it's, uh, this can be much more efficient, reduce data movement significantly by just uh, communicating the value that needs to be added, moving it to the memory side, we might only need to use eight bytes and zero bytes uh, out. This is an um, example uh, um, microarchitecture of the uh, uh, supporting PIM enable instructions. As you can see, it has it deploys these. Um, uh, PEI management unit with a locality monitor in order to find where the cache line that we need to update resides either in the uh, host processor, in the cache hierarchy of the host processor, or in the memory, and based on that, decide where to perform the uh, specific PIM add instruction, for example, the specific uh, P, uh, PIM enable instruction. And so this is an example of how to do efficient scheduling in systems with processing in memory capabilities. And here you can find links to the uh, paper. Another important um, uh, challenge that needs to be solved is how to enable memory coherence, not only between PIM cores, but also between the PIM cores and the host processor, which may be um, accessing data and using data from memory, the same data at the same time. Um, in Conda, uh, we did an analysis of uh, all these, uh, well, different um, um, memory coherence protocols that could be applied. For example, the MESI protocol, which is here represented as fine grain uh, coherence. As you see, it doesn't perform terribly, but uh, of course is really, really far from the ideal PIM solution with zero coherent overhead. Uh, uh, lazy PIM, or also called Conda, 
uh, uh, found a way of uh, maintaining the memory coherence between the host side and the memory side, the PIM side, in a much more efficient way and being very close to the ideal solution, as you can see here in the GeoMIM for several applications with different data sets. You can find all details about this paper um, in the, uh, 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 well, in these links. Uh, for synchronization support as well, we have now systems, processing in memory systems with multiple cores and certain applications require, for example, uh, graph processing or data analytics. Many other applications require uh, ways of communicating between different processing in memory elements and Synchron proposes an efficient synchronization support for near data processing architectures. Uh, in this work, there is a good analysis of different potential solutions, and in the end, um, the solution that was taken and developed um, is based on message passing and specialized hardware support. Some um, small synchronization units placed inside or near each of the near data processing cores or processing in memory cores in, uh, in order to handle the uh, communication in an efficient way and also in a hierarchical way. And virtual memory support is also um, another important topic, something else that needs to be enabled in an efficient way to, for future systems with processing and memory capabilities. If you look at the recent literature, you will see that many um, of the recent works are proposing specific solutions for uh, the virtual memory support. For example, this uh, work in PICA uh, proposes it's um it's a uh, proposes an accelerator near memory processing accelerator for pointer chasing applications and they really need to find a solution uh, to uh, virtual memory support to memory address translation and do because doing the memory address translation that is necessary for the pin cores in the host site would be extremely expensive because there will be a lot of data uh, back and forth a lot of the data movement so what uh, Impica proposes is not using the CPU page table, but having an Impica page table, an Impica region uh, that um, basically allows us to map all the linked data structures that will be accessed by the Impica accelerator into these uh, Impica regions. It's, it's, a, it's a page table, is a partial to any mapping because in the um, uh, pages that we have in the Impica region, they can point to the virtual pages, they can point to any physical page in memory. And here you can see um, a little bit of the mechanism from the virtual address, uh, the physical address is obtained by using some bits to access the uh, so-called region table. And then uh, there is also a flat page table of two megabyte and also a small page table of four kilobyte. One advantage of the, and, and this way we generate the physical address. So one advantage of uh, this solution is that the tiny region table is almost always in the cache of the pin cores, even if these is it might be very small. And uh, at the same time, another advantage is that the flat page table is saving one memory access with respect to usual um, page walks. Security is also an important uh, thing to take into account, security considerations, because now we have a new component, new device in the system, right? So it might happen that in the future we will see software or hardware attacks to systems with uh, these processing in memory capabilities. At the same time, processing in memory systems can be used to improve uh, security of our compute systems, for example, generating physically unclonable functions at the, as these uh, different latency path work uh, propose by taking advantage of uh, cells latency fa uh, failure probability that is related to random process variation. And what the authors of this work notice is that it was possible to provide uh, repeatable and unique device signatures by playing with uh, TRCD, uh, the re basically reducing uh, the latency of um, accessing the DRAM cells. And uh, there are cells that depending on the process variation might have higher chance of uh, error and others with lower chance of error. But in the end, by using them, but, but these uh, patterns are going to be reproducible. And by using them, we can generate paths. Uh, here you can find a link up uh, to the paper. 
And um, based on a similar idea, D-Range proposes a way of extracting random numbers, random values by observing the latency failure probabilities of different cells. Basically, again, based on the idea that some cells have higher chances than others to uh, fail when we reduce TRCD. And here you can find uh, links to the papers and the talks. And more recently, another work that also provides a way of um, obtaining random numbers is um, the quadruple row activation, quad TRNG. In this work, the idea is based on the observation that it is possible to um, issue a sequence of commands to activate four rows in the real DRNGs. Basically, by violating DRAM timing parameters, it's possible to activate four rows at the same time. This generates random numbers, and, um, and these random numbers can be generated at an even faster pace, faster uh, rate than the um, D range that I just mentioned. And here you can find um, more about this paper. I also mentioned that it's uh, necessary to have benchmarks and have simulation infrastructures. They are uh, definitely necessary to enable future research works as well. In this course, we have talked about the PRIM benchmarks that uh, the first version is um, implemented for the admin PIM architecture. Remember that they are publicly available and uh, you can take a look at the corresponding lecture. You can find the link here. But we have also talked about how to identify workloads, the workload suitability with the DAMUF methodology and the corresponding benchmark suite and also a simulator for evaluating data movement bottlenecks. The move is based on three steps uh, to do application profiling first, then uh, cluster the applications based on their locality characteristics, and finally do the fine grain memory bottleneck classification. We identified six different classes of memory bottlenecks. You can find much more about the DAMU paper here and also watch the longer lecture. And similar to this one, to identify, for example, workload suitability for processing in memory or for near memory or for near data processing architectures, NAPL proposes a performance prediction model based on ensemble learning that um, showed very um, uh, lightweight and efficient way of identifying processing in memory suitability. Here you can find a link to the paper. And it's important as well, understand what applications are good or bad for a specific processing in memory systems, because there might be some candidates that are uh, maybe not so, or, or some candidates that appear to be, have a, a lot of good potential for processing in memory, and it might happen that the other way around as well. But until we actually implement an application for a specific system, um, uh, we don't start observing or uh, identifying what are the issues, what are the bottlenecks, and what what uh, what else needs to be done to improve the software, the software, or to improve also the future hardware. Um, specifically, in the last four lectures in this course, we have talked about SPMB, about machine learning training, about transcendental functions, and about genome sequence alignment on processing real processing in memory systems. Uh, the, these four works use the admin PIM architecture as the test bed. So this is a lot of what we have covered in this course and things that uh, have been covered as well in, um, in other editions of this course. And, and, and also at the same time, a summary of the main challenges that um, still need to be solved to enable efficient memory-centric computing systems or compute systems with processing in memory capabilities. As I mentioned earlier, you can find a lot of this into, in, in this book chapter, A Modern Primer on Processing in Memory. But as a summary, as a key takeaway of this course, I would say that um, uh, we have the opportunity to build uh, fundamentally energy efficient data centric computing architectures, even though there will be, as uh, we have just discussed, challenges to solve. These architectures have, have, can also be uh, high performance and in the end, they will be computing architectures with minimal data movement. This way, there will be much more energy efficient and high performance. This course has been inspired by many lectures by Professor Honor Mudlu, for example. Here you can find several links to one of them. And also in this slide, um, he has probably also more recent ones. This one is from uh, December 2020. 
that if you want to keep learning about processing in memory, I can recommend you to also take a look at all the materials of for uh, real team tutorial. We have already uh, delivered two editions, the first one in HPCA 2023, the second one in ASPLOS 2023. If you access the website, uh, from there you will have access to the um, recording in YouTube, but also uh, all the materials that were used by the different speakers, invited speakers from academia and from from industry as well. And we are going to repeat uh, this uh, real team tutorial with uh, some novelties and also a new uh, invited lecturers in ISCA on June 18th. So everyone is welcome to attend either um, uh, physically or online uh, through YouTube. At the bottom, you can find a link to the corresponding live stream. It ha this has been all for today. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you in a future lecture.